Hi there, my name is Mark Bertels and I'm one of the assistant professors here in GIS. In September 2020, we held our first ever virtual open campus event. Uh, this was in place of our regular open campus event, which we unfortunately were not able to hold due to the ongoing coronavirus situation. Despite the physical distance, the event was still a great success and we were able to welcome a large number of prospective students from all over the world to GIS and they could uh, take the opportunity to learn from our current students and our professors to find out a little bit more about the department and the style of interactive learning that we provide here. As part of this, I delivered a mock lecture entitled The Changing Boundaries of Copyright in Our Digital World. This is adapted from content uh, we cover in my digital writing and publication course here at GIS. Uh, and what you're about to watch is the live video recorded on the day. The other people you can see in the video um, are students, uh, current students we have here in GIS and the prospective students were all able to watch this um, and observe the session streamed in real time over the internet. So please make yourself comfortable and watch this session to get a feel for what learning in GIS is like. Um, situation, okay, We've got a very uh, ordinary everyday situation and we have a company employee who has been asked to create an advertisement for an upcoming sales event. He's never made one before, so he accesses the internet to find several examples. He finds one he likes and copies and pastes the general format and design. Next, he inserts the company name and other information. He then copies and pastes some well-written text from another advertisement he finds online. He edits the details together with his company's event details. His supervisor then has a look at it. She decides to make some changes, including adding a picture she finds from Google. Uh, she then approves the advertisement, and this is then passed on to a web development team for publication. So it's a fairly common uh, practice, something I'm sure you can imagine happening uh, 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 on a daily ba basis around the world. Um, but we have an important question. Is it acceptable to use existing content in this way? You know, are we okay in just taking things from the internet? Is that acceptable? Where are the boundaries? You know, when should we uh, take something or when should we not take something? Um, digital technology has made things really easy. It's made things really um, um, easy to do. It's, we can copy and paste in seconds. Um, but very few of us actually stop and pause to think about whether this is okay. You know, should we be doing this? Um, so today, this is the question I want to, for, to, to try, try and consider with my, with my panelists today with me to support me. Um, now, you guys, you're, you're not in my digital writing and publication class. So this is the first time you guys have, have seen this question. So we'll see uh, what you make of it. Um, but as it is you know, a fairly broad question, um, what I want to do is to begin with, let's look at some examples from a different creative industry, the place where, where content is produced, that has also undergone a similar digital revolution. Okay? And this is music. Now, are you guys all music fans, GIS students? Yes, excellent. <laughs> um, right, as you can tell, I am a music fan as well. I've got my uh, equipment here. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to play you some music. Okay, I'm going to ask you what the connection between these pieces of music uh, is. Okay, so uh, hopefully you will be able to hear this as well. Uh, let me know if there's if there's no sound, but fingers crossed, technology will be working. Okay, here's the first one.
Okay, so that was a band called Chic with a song Good Times, written in 1979, or released in 1979 at least. Um, I'm going to play you a second piece of music, and I want you to, to, to give me some comments about what the connection is between the two pieces of music. I said, hit, hop, the hit, the hit, the the hip, hip, hop, you don't stop the rocket to the bang, man, when you say up, jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to beat. Now what you... Okay, so panelists, um... What's the connection between those two songs? It seems to have a similar rhythm, even though it's a different genre. Okay, so it's a different genre, but it has a similar rhythm. Any other comments? Yeah, okay, similar rhythm. Um, yes, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's an identical bass line, okay? The, the, the sound of the bass line is the same. Okay, um, this is one of the early forms of, of, of samples. Um, in, in a way, this kind of predates sampling, but I, I won't go into that. Um, but what the Sugar Hill Gang did was they took a section from the original song, Good Times, the bass line. They looped it and rapped over the top of it. Okay, and um, they recorded this on a low budget, released some uh, white label copies to be played by DJs in New York. And one day, the guitarist from Chic was in a New York nightclub and he heard this song. What do you think his reaction was? Anybody? They took it. <laughs> Uh, what do you think his reaction was? To hear, like, the first time someone had taken his, his, his work, what, what kind of reaction might there be? Offended. Shocked, shocked offended, yeah, yeah. Um, he was so uh, shocked and offended, um, he um, uh, promptly went out and uh, uh, tried to sue the Sugar Hill Gang for stealing his idea, okay? Um, after um, a, a matter of time, the two acts found a compromise and the song was eventually released containing uh, that, that, that piece of music. Okay, so let's listen to another pair of songs. Okay, that was Queen and David Bowie, Under Pressure, and another song we have for you. If there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook while my DJ revolves it. Okay, so uh, same question. Uh, what is the connection here? Mio, what, what's the connection? Uh, they definitely had the same beat. Okay, yes, yeah. we've, got a, we've got another sample, haven't we? Um, the only difference here is um, Vanilla Ice did this in his bedroom, okay? So he, he did this, he was 16 years old when he did it, um, and he did it in his bedroom in Dallas in America. Um, and he, he was able to take the sample in his bedroom, just messing around because of digital technology. You now no longer needed a big studio or recording equipment to be able to take and splice information um, from another song. Now he actually did something else that was a little bit different. He claimed that the baseline he stole was not stealing. He, he tried to claim that it was, was mildly different and there, were, there was a different uh, notation, a different speed to it. But I think um, we can kind of pretty much say that's a, a sample um, there. Now let's look at another one, which is a third one, which is a little bit more difficult. Okay, that was Tony Sherman, uh, a song called L O V E E from 1982. And if you're like me, if you're 30 something years old and you're from the UK, you'll remember that as the theme tune to a, to a, a kids TV show called The Really Wild Show, um, which was on TV when I was very young. Um, and now let's listen to another song. Saturday night, are we in the spot? Don't believe me, 
just watch. Come on! So this third one's a little bit different. Okay, we don't, it's not necessarily the same. If you go and listen to those two songs, they're not the same, but what could you say about them? They're not quite the same, but they are pretty similar. Yeah, it's similar. Yeah, they're very similar. Um, so, so there is a connection here. Okay, and let, let's just listen to, to Mark Ronson talking about, or, or listening to the other piece of music. Okay, let's hear his reaction when he hears it. Now, I don't know this TV show, but there's a TV show from back in the 80s called The Really, Really Wild Show. Mm -hmm. Do you know that show? No. Here's the theme. Have you heard this before? Sounds a bit more like Daft Punk than us, this part at least. Or Justice. It is kind of Daft Punk. It's justice. Mm. It's kind of you Oh, and then the horns. I understand, yeah. I, I understand what they're saying. Yeah, we're all a little bit... Uh, yes, the real wild show and Mark Ronson, Bruno Mars are all equally influenced by Quincy Jones. I think that's what that says to me. Okay, so that was, that was Mark Ronson's take on it. And then he actually mentioned somebody else into the mix. He says, we are all influenced by Quincy Jones, who was Michael Jackson's producer. So suddenly you can see that these, this can get very complicated when we're looking at artistic materials, okay? Something that we're creatively uh, making. Um, the borders between inspiration, copying, um, uh, plagiarism are, are very blurred, okay? So there's, there's hundreds of examples of this kind of thing going on in music. But I just want you to think generally, okay, if I'm gonna give you these three words, um, copy, transform, and combine. Okay, copy, transform, and combine. Copy, taking something and reproducing it, like for like. Transforming, where you take something original and you change it slightly and then combining where you take elements and put them together. For the examples I've shown you, which of these words do you think are appropriate? For the examples we've got, the piece of music. Do you feel that it's copying, transforming, or combining different things? I think it's combining. Okay, why, why do you say combining? Well, because uh, you mentioned earlier, uh, you mentioned like Daft Punk. Um, we're, bo we're all bothering, we're all borrowing ideas from other people, and we're trying to make a beat that looks good for, for music. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, in a sense, even, the, even for the first one, he didn't just copy it. He combined that beat with something that he felt would have been good together. So rap. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, so everything's a combination. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, there's no, there's no rapping on the original record, is there, with the, with the first pair. Um, so there's definitely, you know, at the very least, we can say that there's been a transformation or combination of ideas in those. Um, it, it's not straight up copying, necessarily, but transforming or combining the ideas. Now, as, as, as young people, as music lovers, are you all right with this? Do you think this is okay? Can we, can we transform and combine ideas? Is that, is that fine? What's your opinion on it? Well, I think I'm okay with it as long as the artists give credits to the original artist, like, copy, like you know, um, saying it as like a um, homage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so credit's important, um, that, that, you know, that, that, that the original work is recognized. Um, I think that, that, that's, you know, that's fairly um, indicative of what people think now. Um, back in 1979, you know, Niall Rogers was, was, was really angry that he had been copied. But now we don't really see it as copying. We see it as, like you say, a homage. We see it as something new we see it as a kind of valid art form, okay? So in that, in that time, we've gone from, you're stealing my idea, to, 
oh, you're using my idea, as long as you give me credit, that's cool. So we've gone through this process with music that we, we now um, accept this to an extent. As long as it's done properly, we don't have any issue with it. Um, and that's shown by, by statistics. I mean, 59% of the top 100 albums last year on the Billboard charts contain samples. So that really does prove that we as a society, um, we're okay with this. We kind of accept that this is going to happen. Uh, and we have a collective opinion that, that using um, previous material, transforming it, combining it, adds something to the art form and pushes it further and, and, and makes it better. Um, how do you feel about copying? Straight up copying. Is that okay? I think it's lazy. It's lazy. It's lazy. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Okay. A good word to describe it. It's lazy. We're not particularly okay with copying. Okay. It doesn't sit well with us. We're, we as a society now are happy to say, okay, transformation, combination is okay, but just simply taking ideas um, is tantamount to theft. I mean, you as GIS students all know the word plagiarism. Um, that, that you're taught about uh, at university, stealing somebody's ideas uh, is not okay. Okay, we shouldn't be copying. Yet, yeah, you should, you know, university, we're teaching you to transform and combine, aren't we? we? We send you away to read passages, we send you away to read books, you look at those ideas, you combine them with your own thoughts, other pieces of writing, other websites, and you incorporate them into your own essays and research papers. Um, simply copying a source is going to get you into a lot of trouble. <laughs> but as a society, um, we, we kind of see the value in transformation and, and combination. So let's think back to the written example, the, the uh, digital content we, we looked at originally. Um, what do we think to that? If we say copy, transform, or combine for that, that original um, um, piece of that original situation I gave you with an employee taking different parts of advertisement, combining them, pulling images of Google, which of these words do you think best describes that? They can kind of be combining, but we don't know. We don't know exactly how he did everything. We kind of okay. just know that. That's, yeah, yeah. So. I mean, obviously, we only have limited details. Yeah. Um, but but you know, we did say you know he took the general layout from one um, advertisement. He took words from another. Um, a picture was added from Google Image Search. So yeah, I think you're right. We can say that there is combination going on here. Um, so are we comfortable with that in, 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 in when, we, when we're looking at digital contents? Are we comfortable with that? Like taking things, borrowing things, putting things together. Is that okay? We've kind of, we've kind of as a society said, it's okay in music. Is it okay now on the internet? What's your opinion on that? Mm, I don't really think that it's, it's not like, a bad thing but it's there's no originality okay okay so yeah not so, it, people, I would say. Mm -hmm. so perhaps in some situations it's okay okay yeah i, th I think that, that's fair to say um in some situations it's okay um i mean the internet has allowed us to use and interact it's easily used and interact with other people's digital content that we know uh, we do it every day um, we copy and paste we take pictures to send to our friends and, and make jokes with them or memes or whatever we take other people's digital comments on a daily uh, digital content on a daily basis um it's easy we can find something transform it combine it um, and uh, create something new and 
again, broadly as a society, we've kind of said it's okay. We've accepted this as okay. And if you, if you send a, a meme or a picture to your friend, do they ever go, oh, did you check the copyright first? No, no, never had that situation. No, me neither. Okay, so we can kind of say that as a society, we're saying this is okay. We, we're allowing this to happen. Um, that as a society, um, this content is, is in a way fair to use. Um, and Lawrence Lessing, who um, is the man who founded something called Creative Commons, um, which we'll come on to in a moment, uh, back in 2008, he, he um, released a book called, book called uh, Remix. And he coined this term remixing, which you know, is obviously a term taken from music. Um, and he, he says that, you know, we remix content online, okay? We take something, we combine it, we transform it, and we do something new with it. And, you know, we're all kind of fair and happy with that, aren't we? Everything's, everything's fine with that. Until, of course, this gets involved, okay? So we said, of course, um, that, that we kind of, we think it's okay what, what, what this company employee did taking various bits and pieces. What if I change the situation and say, okay, that advertisement made the company several million dollars and it was a very successful advertising campaign. Does that change how we feel about the original act? What do you think? Does, does that change it for you or does it make no difference? It does change, I think. Yeah. You're, you're taking uh, intellectual property. Okay, good word. Intellectual property, so. yeah. Um, yeah, you, you, if you're making money with something, some, suddenly it becomes much more serious. People get much more annoyed, just as in music. You know, I'm sure you know, many music artists are, you know, would be happy or be flattered if I was sat here in my, in my music room taking bits of their music and, and messing around with it. If I decided then to release it and I was selling that product, then I might expect um, um, a, a phone call or a letter from, from their, their lawyers uh, asking for money or songwriting credits or, or whatever uh, they're asking for. And it's the same with digital content, okay? As soon as money becomes involved, um, then, then this can get very sticky very quickly, okay? And this is a big problem on the internet because once we put something out there, okay, once that advertisement gets onto the internet, we can't control it anymore. We kind of lose our power over it. It's, it's you know, just like music, we, we give it to the public and they can do whatever they want with it, okay? We're releasing it to them. Um, and, um, you know, something that we don't necessarily mean to be, um, you know, financially, get any financial gain from, suddenly can create value, have value created, you know, something like a grumpy cat might be a good example. No one expects a grumpy cat to be um, an internet sensation, but there you go, you know, the internet is a strange place. Um, and so really from day one, as, as people using content on the internet, you and I, we need to be a little bit smarter and a little bit more um, careful about how we use content, okay? You know, we, we, we may not be aiming to make lots of money with something or for it to uh, gain value, but this can happen. And it's, you know, there's no police, there's no, um, nobody checking what we're doing on the internet. So really it's, it's up to us, isn't it? We have to um, really, uh, police ourselves at the moment uh, because the situation we're in on the internet at the moment there's nobody to do it for us so how can we be more ethical how can we do this in a better way let's look back at the original um, situation that we had in um, the uh, the company with the advertisement let's look at what they could have done 
to better um, produce this and, and produce it in a more ethical way, which is not necessarily going to lead to trouble later on. Um, first thing like, that, that happens is that the employee finds, um, uh, a, he finds a, an example of an advertisement uh, and pastes the gen copy and pastes the general format and design. Where do you think he probably found that? Okay, if you're going to go and try and find something, where do you go? Google. Google, yeah, pretty much, you know, 90, at least 93% of all searches are done on Google. We're going to go to Google first off. Um, we really shouldn't be doing that, okay? Um, if we are doing something, especially if it could have commercial uh, value, we should be doing something a bit smarter. We should be looking for royalty-free templates. And there are actually lots of places out there where you can get uh, these kind of things completely free and with a completely clear conscience, okay? Uh, the example I've got here is one I use, which is a picture chart. Uh, and this is a... Um, a website that has wonderful, really nice uh, quality templates uh, for free, uh, which you can go in, use, edit, and then take them away. And, and you can have a clear conscience that nobody is gonna come knocking on your door for ro a royalty check because they're all provided with um, a license to say you can take them. Next, he get, went in and found some well-written text from a different advertisement. Again, there are places you can go to get this, which is completely royalty free. Okay, you're getting express permission to, do, to, to use it. Um, and one example I've got here is Creative Commons, which if you remember, is the, 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 founda the uh, organization founded by Lawrence Lessing, who I mentioned a little bit earlier. And, and he is obviously of the opinion that we should be remixing, we should be doing this, but it should be done ethically. You know, if you put something up, you should be giving express permission for people to use it. And then when you download it, you have a free conscience that what you're downloading and using, the person has agreed to. So Creative Commons might have been a good place for, for that uh, company employee to go to find some well-written text, uh, an example um, to um, use in, in the, the article, uh, the advertisement. And finally, the supervisor was also guilty. Uh, the supervisor took pictures from Google. Um, please never take pictures from Google. It's one of my pet hates. <laughs> um, and there are lots of great places as well to get royalty free images often i think much better than you get on google you know google you get all these really awful low resolution um shutter stock stolen uh, images and websites like unsplash offer you the same thing um but again completely royalty free um, you've noticed i've been using photographs throughout this presentation um, hopefully you've been thinking, oh, they're lovely pictures, or oh, they're very nicely done. They're all from Unsplash, okay? Um, and you can search it and you can get some great images uh, and they're royalty free. So you don't need to pay anybody uh, for anything. Um, so doing this um, really is, you know, we should be doing these things. So to go back to the central question, um, is it acceptable to use existing content in this way? You know, taking things from Google, combining them, remixing them and putting them out there. The short answer is yes, we can do it. Okay. But we can do it better. Okay. There's, there are better ways to do this. There are more ethical ways to do this. Um, and ways in which, you know, you can sleep at night knowing that you've done your bit to kind of make the internet a better place, okay? If we all did this, if we all checked and all made sure we had uh, the appropriate rights to use things, then um, I think 
that would be um, you know, a better place. Um, as I mentioned before, as creators, we should expect that our, idea, our ideas will be borrowed and remixed, okay? As soon as you put something on the internet, you lose control of it, you know? And that goes for your um, personal life as well, you know, Instagram pictures um, can be taken in a second and somebody somewhere can use it. Um, I've, I've had this uh, experience um, of having something taken, you know, I, it was, it was, um, a few years ago, a friend of mine uh, posted a photo on Facebook. Um, I made a comment. It was a joke. Uh, it was a fantastic joke. One of my best. Uh, got lots of likes. And I thought, well, that, that was a nice joke. Um, a few days later, um, a, another friend emailed me and said, check out this Reddit thread. And somebody had taken my friend's photo and my joke and posted it on Reddit. And it had half a million views. And I was like, oh, theft, that's mine. That's my idea. That was my joke. Okay. Um, I was, I was, you know, I was like Nile Rogers back in the seventies. I was, I was, you know, really annoyed that someone had taken my genius and, and <laughs> put, it, put it up for themselves. Um, um, and now I look back and I think, well, you know, you know, it was a joke on the internet. It can be stolen. You know, perhaps, you know, you need to change your mindset and think, well, if I put it up there, it's fair game. Okay. That, that people can and will take this. Um, so just make, you know, go with that in your mind whenever you post anything online. That it can be borrowed. It can be remixed. And you may see it somewhere days, weeks, years later uh, on the internet somewhere else. And uh, as remixers, as if when we take stuff, we need to respect the original work, which I think somebody mentioned, uh, was it Mio mentioned about the, with music, you know, the homage, um, respecting what you're taking from. I think music has, has it pretty well sorted after 50 years of, of, of going through this process. Internet is, we're still a lot younger. Um, we're still finding that level of respect in um in in this kind of uh, environment and uh, we should obviously avoid copying um at all costs and this will help to foster a healthy digital ecology um the internet as i say will be a nicer place if we were all doing this if we were all making sure we were getting our uh, pictures our information uh, our copy paste um, bits and pieces from the right places. Um, because ultimately remixing does have amazing power um, to create something new and it, it, it does have a proven track record of pushing culture forward. Um, if we go back to that first music um, pairing, the Chic Good Times and Sugar Hill Gang Rapper's Delight, Rapper's Delight was the, the remix, in inverted commas. Um, it was taking the original work of somebody else. Um, but arguably, Rapper's Delight has more cultural value. Okay, Rapper's Delight, it was the first um, rap song to ever go to number one in the United States. So it has a huge cultural significance there. Um, and it's included in the US uh, Library of Congress, um, which keeps a vault of, of all important music throughout the decades in America. And that song, Rapper's Delight, is in that library. The original, Good Times, although it's a great song, is not, okay? So that shows that, that, that remixing, using other people's ideas can be, um, culturally really significant but we need to be um, very careful with how we use it and so to finish with um, I want to uh, just finish on a quote by um, uh, Murray and, and this is I think really sums up the point I'm trying to make today um, the remix should be seen as a transformative work of creativity that forms part of the fabric of our wider cultural environment. 
As with radio, recorded music, and the VCR before it, the internet represents just another technological shift that we have yet to fully reconcile. So, um, in essence, I think you know the remix is uh, a valid art form. Um, using digital content is you know, a good thing to do. Um, I have calmed down a lot since those days where my joke was stolen. Um, and um, as long as we're making sure we're taking it from the right places and we're not just simply reproducing something because it's easy, we're actually doing something with it, then I think uh, we should have uh, a healthy um, digital environment to, to live and work in, okay? So um, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much to my uh, panel for their, um, uh, for their help. Um, uh, and now, uh, any questions to, to ask at this stage for, for um, the, uh, from either the, the panel or the people out there um, listening along? Um, any questions? You're okay, yeah. Nobody um, listening along wanted to ask a question? Okay, well, that was a short Q&A session if nobody wants to, to ask a question. Um, as you can see, uh, I've got my references listed here. Um, last thing to say, um, you may have wondered um, about the artist pictures and sound clips I used. Um, and you, know, you may be thinking along at home, like, well, you probably can't find those royalty free. And that's true. Um, I do admit that the, uh, the artist pictures and sound clips I used are not royalty free. However, um, as some, this is something we discuss in the course as well. They do fall under fair use copyright law. I was very careful with my music. I kept them, the, 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 the snippets, under 15 seconds um, and the images as well. When using to support teaching, research and scholarship, fair use copyright law does apply. Um, screenshots were by me. Um, and like I said, all the photos are from uh, Unsplash, everything you saw in the uh, presentation was from Unsplash. So I hope that was informative and perhaps will change uh, how you um, deal with the internet and uh, digital content in the future. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much to my panel and I will hand it back um, to um, uh, Professor Nia, if she's there. Uh, hi. Uh Professor Bertels, thank you very much for a very uh, interesting lecture. I was really uh, hooked. <laughs> this is the first time I'm taking your class. Uh, so I did learn uh, some new ideas. I have a couple of questions, but maybe we can do it outside uh, the class. Um, we're getting a question uh, from uh, John asking, what other classes do you te teach at GIS? Okay, um, other classes I teach, um, as I mentioned briefly at the beginning, I teach classes to do uh, with writing and communication. So I teach the digital writing and publication course. Uh, I teach the academic writing courses, uh, it's a two part course, uh, which I taught Momo a couple of years ago, um, if you remember that course. Um, uh, and that is a required course that everybody takes in GIS um, to help improve your academic English. Um, so I teach that. Uh, I teach professional communication, um, which is looking at communication in a professional sense, in a work environment, and presentation and public speaking, which is um, a really good chance for students to improve uh, skills that they will need uh, in GIS, getting up in front of other people and talking, uh, which is not always the easiest things. Even for us seasoned professionals, <laughs> it can still be very nerve wracking getting up and speaking. So yeah, they are the courses uh, I teach in GIS. Thank you. Uh, we still have about 15 minutes left. So we're going to conclude the mock lecture as is, but uh, if anyone have any questions to the students or to, um, to us uh, professors about GIS, we may, um, you may want to enter those questions on the chat function. 
and ask us questions and we will be answering it verbally one by one. Uh, if you do not have any questions or if you have signed up for uh, individual consultation sessions, um, you may leave and I believe you can just uh, leave by clicking on the exit button. Is that right? I'm not so sure. Um, so let's conclude it here and please do ask us questions. We still have 20, uh, 15 more, 13 more minutes for Q&A. Okay, we have, we have a thank question. Thank you again. Question and let's give a big in. round of applause to uh, Professor Burroughs for an excellent lecture. <laughs> uh, we, we've got a question just come in uh, for, for, I, I, for the students. Um, what are your favorite classes in GIS? That's a great question. <laughs> Well, I'm on third year. Um, I'm taking a class called investment and it's a, uh, it's a really fun class. It's really different compared to most classes. It's not really passive. And um, we're kind of not fighting with each other, but we're competing to see who makes the most money at the end of the semester. It's really interesting. So there's classes like that at GIS. So. How about you, Momo, Mio? Yeah, I'm also in third year. And then last semester I took um, cultural psychology. It was really interesting because we learned the tendencies and differences um, of people, like how people think based on cultures. So we compared Eastern people and Western people and how each of um, person think about uh, think of the same thing yeah it was really interesting to see the tendencies and stuff mm. and Mio yes um, I'm a second year student at GIS and I've taken so many classes uh, regarding to sociology and also business and I feel like um, Hmm. Well, I think uh, every course is every course is very interesting. But for me, it was uh, very interesting to take. Um, well, I have so many favorite classes. <laughs> so uh, this year, uh, my favorite classes were um, media effects and media representations. Also, I'm taking social psychology too. That is very interesting. Like uh, we've only like we had like uh, only three weeks so far, but it's already interesting. So it's, those are one of, uh, some of my favorite classes. Thank you. Asuka, how about you? Yes. Um, I basically like all the tourism courses like tourism management or all the related tourism. But generally, like, because I'm a fourth year, remembering about freshmen, I really liked um, drama workshop. And it really helped me a lot to um, gain how I speak in front of everyone. And those skills I learned in the workshop. And I think it was really fun. That was a great question, by the way. Thank you, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Orange, uh, for asking a wonderful question. Any other questions? We have about 10 more minutes, if you'd like to say anything. Oh, we have one person from the... Does everyone in GIS speak English fluently like the students? I think it's different for each person. I mean, I'm Japanese American, so I, I speak fluently, but a lot of my friends, um, they haven't been to any other country besides Japan, or they've been in the Japanese education system. And it was fun watching them uh, progress. Uh, they practice, we talk to each other in English, even though they want to speak Japanese, they uh, try to improve. And in, a, in the third year, they're just as fluent as everyone else. So I think it's a, it's a great learning frog, uh, learning process to watch, but yeah, everyone has their own start. Okay, um, and I also feel that there's 
students who can better express their ideas verbally in a discussion and some other students who are better expressing them through words by writing. Uh, they have much deeper uh, thinking when they write than when they speak. Um, and so yes, we often ask people to do discussion as well as uh, submit papers and we combine all of them so that everybody's uh, opinion gets represented in, in this discussion. Um, then we have one more question, I think. Um, how long do you take for the open campus students to get used to the interactive class style at GIS? Did you have any difficulty adjusting to GIS? Aska, you're nodding. You want to go first? Yes, um, I think it was really hard for the first time when I entered that I had to do a lot of like presentations or discussions and during the class it's not like um, just listening, it's just we have to talk a lot or discuss with professors or students and it's not easy for the first time. But then since um, GIS is really like um, small classes, so we don't have many people in the class. So between um, classmates and also between professors, we can, um, if we have questions, we can ask anytime or when we don't know the classes, we can just ask anyone. That was really, that helped me a lot to um, like feel like I'm in the class, so I'm welcome in the class, which um, I was comfortable in a way that um, yeah, I could just fit into the class and then when I realized that I was able to speak in the, and interact in the class. Would you have any tips on how to make, how to adjust better to this GIS <laughs> environment? What kind of things did you do to become part of this GIS community? Um, I think that for the first time I was being really like shy and I wasn't told, like I was not asking any questions during the class or after the class. But then I tried to talk to more, talk more to like professors, also the classmates. Then like, if I just, if, if not, if not, you can just um, send emails or um, ask student after the class. And that's how, um, you know, that's how, and that by texting or um, saying, texting friends or um, sending emails to professors, can, they will like, they can give me like a lot of um, help and then that made the relationship really closer and I was able to um, interact in the class too. Any other question? <laughs> oh, yes, can don't be, oh, don't be scared of making mistakes. I think it's a, it's a really big, honest one for interactive classes. So everything is new. Uh, we don't know what the correct, nobody knows what the correct answer is that, but everyone's trying to figure out. So don't be shy of making mistakes. That's an excellent point, Kaito, um, because oftentimes we don't really, even the professors don't really have the right answer. Um, and ideas really just come from the discussion, from exchange of ideas. Um, and the process of thinking about an issue is oftentimes more important than finding out what is the right answer to that qu particular question. Okay, well, excellent, excellent comment. Thank you, Kaito. Okay, so I think we are running out of time. So I'm going to um, conclude the session here. Thank you very much to Momo, Mio, Kaido, and Asuka for joining us today. I know that they um, volunteered to be part of this event. So thank you again. Let's give you a big round of applause again. And so I hope, thank you all the, um, to the audience. Um, thank you all for joining me today to this virtual open campus. I hope that you got interested in joining us next year. I'm looking forward to your applications and uh, hopefully we'll see you next year in April or September. All right, so bye and have a good afternoon.